Uh, the standout to me, Marco, is that you guys are basically calling the end to the bull market uh, here in the U.S., and we're going to see more volatility. Walk me through the thesis. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me. Well, the, the key story for our outlook next year is going to be slow down in global growth, and especially in the U.S. in the second half of next year, we are seeing uh, growth falling below trend as the fiscal stimulus starts uh, waning. So we believe that the Fed will have uh, three more hikes, uh, one at the end of this year and two more into next year. But then starting around mid next year, they will start pausing as the economy starts losing momentum. And uh, they may well uh, uh, reverse uh, rate hikes and start cutting rates in 2020, where in our forecast, the US economy slows into a mild recession. What is going to be the trigger of this uh, uh, slowdown initially and then downturn in the US economy? We think mainly the corporate uh, balance sheet, which are getting increasingly stretched as the Fed hike rates and the monetary and financial conditions get tighter and uh, due to the re-leveraging of the corporate sector in the US. So that's, that's going to expose the vulnerability of the US economy once the fiscal stimulus starts petering out. And what's interesting, Philip, is, and why I really want to talk to you guys, is that 2020, you actually see the Fed cutting rates three times. Many economists wind up looking at just sort of uh, the Fed peaking out or a mild recession, as you do, but three times to cut rates. What made you think that, Philip? Marco? F Philip? I think that's better your part. OK, Marco, you want to take that one? Marco. Yeah, I'm taking this one. Yes, it's, it's going to be a tailor rule framework, right? If you plug in our forecast for GDP growth, the unemployment rate uh, and inflation in 2020, that's what you end up with. At least three rate, high, rate cuts by the Fed, right? So then, Philip, walk that through in an investment process. Where do uh, yields peak out here? What does that wind up meaning for the dollar? Well, um, as for the for currency markets, um, as this is likely looking like a more synchronous slowdown, the big implications on currencies will not be that big. For euro dollar, we think that the current trend of a weaker euro will continue into uh, early next year, and then it will bottom out uh, mid next year, and uh, we will si likely see a, a stronger euro um, towards the end of next uh, year and also towards uh, 2020. So um, we see euro dollar as low as 108 mid next year and could mm. increase up to 120 end of 2020. But I think the most important implications for markets will, as Marco has mentioned, uh, the differences in the shape of the corporate sector in the US and in Europe. And there, our concern is that in the US, we could see balance sheet issues, while the slowdown in Europe for corporates will likely only cause earnings issues.